Welcome to another video. This problem is from the British Mathematics Olympiad for 2023-24. And the mission is to find all positive integers n such that n times 2 to the n plus 1 is a square. That is a perfect square. As usual, you want to give this a shot. If you find another way different from my way of solving it, um, I'll be happy to actually read it and see how you did it. So at least I could learn something and others could also learn. Let's get into the video. So, because what we have is going to be a perfect square, the smart thing to do is to represent the other side with a square. So I'm going to use the letter K. I like K. So I'm going to say that let N times 2 to the N plus 1 be equal to K squared because K squared tells us that what we have is a square. A perfect square and just naturally looking at this you know that if you move this one over here you're gonna end up with k squared minus 1 which gives you the difference of two squares and you can start manipulating things that's what you must do unless you find another way so I'm going to move this one over here and say n times 2 to the n will be equal to k squared minus 1 so n times 2 to the n will be equal to k minus 1 times k plus 1. Now, I've said many things about this kind of expression before, okay? Anytime you write numbers like this, where this one is minus 1 and this is plus 1, you could tell that these are two consecutive even numbers or two consecutive odd numbers. So it's like 3 times 5, or 7 times 9, or 4 times 6, because the difference between this number and this number is just 2. So let's figure out whether these two numbers are even or not. Let's go to the other side, because if this side is even, this side must be even. Well, clearly, you have an exponential expression here that is has a base of 2, which makes it even. So whatever happens on this side is going to be even. Whatever n is, this number will always be an even number because of this 2. So it means that what you have here, there are two even numbers, two consecutive even numbers. Okay? That's important because this was where I got stuck because I couldn't figure out the restriction, but now I found it. And what's the restriction? As you can see, this has a bunch of 2's, so there are several powers of 2 that are going to be hiding inside of this expression. Then there are several powers of 2 hiding on the right-hand side. But the problem with the right-hand side is that there are two consecutive even numbers. And because there are two consecutive even numbers, only one of them can carry all of them. The other one is just going to take one of the 2's. So there are no consecutive even numbers where one is a, a huge power of two and the other also contains many twos. The other one can only have one two. Now it sounds like a theorem, but maybe one needs to prove that. But that's the key to this. So I, I'm going to write this. K minus one and K plus one are consecutive even numbers, okay, because the right hand side by parity, okay, because the left hand side is even, this must be even, okay, one of these must be even, and if one is, is even, the other also has to be even, because the difference between the two numbers is two. So both of them have to be even or both have to be odd. And because this is even, this has to be even, even. We, that's clear. Okay. Let's pick any two numbers that has a two. Let's, let's take 32, for example. 32 is 2 to the fifth power. Any even number around 32 will only have one 2 in it. 
If you go to the right, 34 is just 2 times 17. 30 is 2 times 15. So there's just one 2 multiplying an odd number because this is even and the power of 2. So if you go around, so let's take um, 64 for example. The number after 64 is 66. It is just 2 times 33. It's 2 times an odd number. If you go here, it's going to be 62. 62 is um, 2 times 31, an odd number. So any number that has many powers of 2, so one of these will have many powers of 2. The other number is just 2 times an odd number. So based on this explanation, this has to have all the twos except one two, which belongs here, just to make this even, or this has to have all the twos except one two that we use here to make this an even number. So we can say that k minus one, k minus one must be some multiple of all the powers of two hiding here. So it has to be, let's say it is a, times 2 to the n minus 1. So all the powers of 2, let's say there are 7 of them, 6 of them are going to be hiding in one expression, um, um, or they're going to be hiding in k plus 1. Will be, um, let's call it, let's use the same thing, 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so you're going to have this multiplying an even number, or you're going to be happy having this multiplying an even number. That is, so let's look at it. You're going to have n2 to the n will be equal to this. Let's write it as a times 2 raised to the power n minus 1 multiplying, since this is k minus 1, k plus 1. Or you're going to have the other case. You're going to have n2 to the n will be equal to this is going to be k minus 1 times um, a times 2 to the n minus 1. I hope this makes sense. So now this is the even number, like this, multiplying this, two consecutive numbers, don't forget. Or it will be these two multiplying each other, where this one has just the one two, and this has all the twos in the world. The good thing about where we are at this stage is that you can start thinking of making inequalities from what you have. Because you can't test all the numbers from 1 to infinity. You have to find a way to stop. And that's when you know you found all the solutions. If they say find all solutions, that's the key to it, inequalities. So what I'm going to do is look at this and go, Okay, n2 to the n equals this. What if, without loss of generality, remember it could be this one and it could be this one. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, but just to make life easy, let's pick this one, actually. Okay, let's pick this one. So let's say we have, um, oh, consider this. So. If we take this option, we can, you know what, I want to split the board in two. That was not an even split, but I tried. If we divide both sides by 2 to the n minus 1 so that we have all the powers of 2 on one side, notice what's going to happen. We're going to have n, if you divide this by this, it means you'd be subtracting the exponents. If you subtract these exponents, it's going to be 2 raised to the power n minus, this exponent comes in, becomes n minus 1, will be equal to a times k plus 1. Well, this means n minus n plus 1, which just means 1, so that's n times 2 raised to the power 1, which is 2n. So we get 2n equals a times k plus 1. Interesting. Now, this shows that 2n is a multiple of k plus 1. This a is greater than or equal to 1. I put this when I erase the board because a is an integer, a positive number. We don't want to reverse the direction of where we're going. So a is just any integer that's positive that can make things bigger. 
So, or leave it the way it is, which so A could be one or more. So if you remove, get rid of this A, we can easily see that two N is either greater than K plus one or equal to K plus one. Because A is not a fraction, okay. But we know that K plus one is greater than K minus one, common sense, right? K plus one, we're trying to connect this two n to this two to the n minus one. Because if you can connect the two of them, your restriction has been generated. This is a linear function, this is an exponential function. And if you do greater than or less than for both of them, there's gonna be a point where one of them will give up. And that's where you come to an end. So here, we know that K plus one is greater than K minus one. That is true, k plus one is greater than k minus one. And we know that k minus one is this guy. So we can actually say, hey, if k minus one equals this, we know that k minus one is greater than or equal to two to the n minus one. Greater than or equal to two to the n minus one. That is what we want. From here, k minus one is greater than this or equal to it if we get rid of the a just like we did here. So if we connect the beginning to the ending, we say therefore 2n is greater than or equal to two to the n minus one. And this is the beauty of what we're doing. Why? Because a linear function is rarely greater than an exponential function. The exponential function goes, grows faster. So if this is greater than this, it is just for a while. That while is the restriction and we're done. Because now we can find all the possible numbers that make this possible. Let's test it. So let's assume we have, um, we can actually divide both sides by two again, <laughs> just to make life easy. Okay, let's divide both sides by two. We're gonna end up with n. You know, I just wanna test, I don't care. So let's do n. And on this side, we're gonna do um, two n. And here we're gonna do two to the n minus one. Let's find all the values. So our n will be all positive integers. So we have to start from one. So we have one, two n is gonna be two. 2 to the 1 minus 1 is 2 to the 0, which is 1. 2 is greater than 1. It satisfies this condition. Okay? Now, we're just looking at the conditions first. We're going to go back and test it in the original expression to see if it gives us a perfect square. But we're just restricting the number of n's we need to try. Okay? So let's go to the next one. n equals 2. 2n is going to be 4. And then we put two here, two raised to the power two minus one, two minus one is one, that's gonna give us two raised to the power one, which is two. Four is greater than two, that's still acceptable. We go to the next one, three. Two times three is six. We're gonna put three here. Three minus one is two, two raised to the power two is four. Six is greater than four. Nice, looks like I'm running out of space. Let's go to four. 2 times 4 is 8. If we put 4 here, we're going to have 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1. That's 2 raised to the power 3, which is 8. Oh, they're both 8. Okay? You see, now they're equal. We have come from greater than to or equal to. So, let's try one more, which is going to fail, obviously, because we're beginning to get to the bigger numbers. So if we do n equals 10, n equals 5, we're going to have 2n. 2n will be equal to 10. And then we're going to have 2 to the 5 minus 1. That's 2 to the 4th. This is 16. Okay. You can see 10 is no longer greater than or equal to 16, so this is not valid. Any number beyond 4 is not going to work. So all the answers we're looking for will be from 1 to 4. And beyond that, we cannot be testing any number. So now let's go back and test n equals 1, n equals 2, 3, or 4. And if we get our answer, 
that's that's it that's it that's the total we can get all the ends we're going to be testing will be less than or equal to four so let's go test the first one is it a perfect square so let's do n one two three four and here we're going to be testing n times two raised to the power n plus one okay so let's do one it's going to be 1 times 2 raised to the power 1, which is 1 times 2, which is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is not a perfect square, so it doesn't fall in the category. Let's go to the next one. Um, n equals 2. Let's put 2 here. So we got 2 times 2 raised to the power 2. 2 raised to the power 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Yay, it is a square. We take 3. We'll put 3 here, 3, 2 raised to the power 3 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, 24 plus 1 is 25, another square. So we got 25, let's go. And then we do 4, with 2 raised to the power 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, 64 plus 1 is 65. No, it is not a square. And is equal to 2. Three. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.